Uh, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here. Uh, yes, on planet Earth, we'll say. <laughs> what the hell? Um, so I'll just read a couple of comments. You know, it's whatever, 150 words, and I'm sure I can make a four-hour video out of that. So, no problem. Um, some guy named Stanley F., uh, probably Mickey Farley, the infamous troll. Uh, the one devoting his whole life to debunking me in some way by invading my privacy and attacking the people who live in this house and doing all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, in that vein, they have suspended the Inmendum Videos account, uh, so can't upload there or um, <clears throat> can't put any of my videos over there. Uh, that I like to put on the website sometimes, so, uh, you know, a little bit inconvenient, but part of doing business here in the, you know, cheaters world um, of the internet, where the trolls really do get to run everything. Um, you know, I posted some on Quora, you know, some physics stuff, and um, it's so silly, you know, because they oblige you to use your real name, you know, to dox yourself, essentially. So, obviously, if you say something controversial, you're just asking for harassment. And, um, but everybody just cheats, you know, I mean, everybody, so they're basically saying just lie, okay? Just put a fake name, and we're only going to ask you if it really, really is important, then we'll force you to verify who you are, something like that. That is, is the policy, the unwritten policy. And it's just so, like, anti, uh, you know, it's just two steps backwards, and then you know, like a half a step forward. I mean, it's just so, you know, illogical to be endorsing lying, um, uh, you know, to protect yourself against evil. I mean, it's just, no, that's not going to work. you got to come up with a better, a better plan than that. But anyway, it's just an example of the, you know, this, he's, these, these, these trolls accuse me of being contradictory and hypocritical and all kinds of um, violations and yet they're so dishonest and, and it's, it's like they're fighting these evils of hypocrisy and contradiction with the beautiful thing called lying <laughs> you know it's just ridiculous anyway uh, so in Mendham doesn't like suffering obviously you know obviously you don't understand the concept but anyway he says that we should be careful not to do bad things uh, yeah we should think uh, that's what we have a brain it can do that um, and again, there's no contradiction with stating that we're robots. Robots can process some questions a very long time. They can process them a very short time. And depending on how much processing they do, they come up with different a a answers. So you could argue the Google algorithm could produce much better search results. But people want it fast. They want it to happen really, really fast. And... Um, you know, that's how Google won the search in your wars, actually, was because um, it was a venture capitalist um, scheme. And they, you know, they knew they were going to shove a bunch of ads on everything and they were going to do this, you know, they had this plan to pay for it all. And um, so they could afford servers that nobody else could afford. They could, they could afford to produce a product for free that was better than the product people could produce, you know, having to make money. And, um, but it was all about, yeah, how fast, you know, you people couldn't afford to spend an extra millisecond of thought, you know, have their search results be a little bit better. Um, but anyway, then our brains work the same way. You can spend more time thinking of more possible permutations. I would argue the longer you think about having a kid, the more obvious it's going to be that it's a bad idea, <laughs> frankly. That nothing good of this. It just the, 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 it's such a low probability experiment. Um, unless you're planning on having 15 of them, and you don't care if you ruin 15 of them. You know, 14, whatever. You know, that's you know, you know, the only way it works is if you're really thinking about it as just being free money. You just put the money in the slot machine. The more quarters you put in, the more likely it is you're going to win. And you don't care about all the lost quarters. You know, who cares? I killed my kid. Who cares? Um, so as long as you have that attitude, you can win, but the world doesn't win, and that's the bottom line. But anyway, all right, he says that we should be careful uh, to not do bad things. 
that there's clearly a difference between a cupcake and a nail in the eye. Yes. <laughs> I really shouldn't even have to explain that one to anyone. Everyone should be able to agree. Oh, shit. And <laughs> that he and others should obviously choose cupcake and not the suffering. You should choose, okay, and do your calculations of life as stated. It's not that complicated to figure out that it's all the same for all of us. We're all in this together in the sense that we're all sentient beings and it's going to cost whoever has to jump in the water, like, you know, if you're on a lifeboat, um, <clears throat> it's going to be unpleasant for whoever gets to have to do it. And so we have to just all recognize that. And the decision shouldn't be well, I'm selfish, and uh, you know I shouldn't have to because I'm selfish. That's not a, that's not reasoning. It's not, it's not thinking. It's really stupid. So obviously we have to make our decisions in the context of the world we exist in. So it's not just about being careful for your own welfare to make yourself feel better. No, it's being careful in the sense of considerate of all the other things you're going to influence and how you're going to influence them, and. Um, you know, are you going to make them better people or lesser people? And I would argue you trolls are just sitting there placating every bad impulse in human beings. You know, you're not, got, you're not making better human beings. <laughs> you're making really shitty robots. So anyway, back to the story. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, but he also says that we just, we are just robots. How can this be when robots don't have feelings? I mean, obviously, I make it very clear that we're robots with feelings. I mean, there's no... So again, you have to be this explicit and say, well, you know, every time I say robot, it doesn't mean I'm saying we are actual IBM computers or something and we don't have any feelings. Of course, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the part of you that makes decisions is no different than any other kind of program device that it was in fact programmed now the architecture the mechanical structure is different it's made of different stuff it isn't full of wires and cpus but what the basic elemental function is the same so if i was to say that you know every competition is just a competition now some of them are complicated and some of them are simple so you know, i can understand the nuance of them you could have a competition that just says, you know, you could have the, 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 <laughs> the woman runs at a certain speed. And, you know, the male, the bigger, fatter males who can keep up with her, okay, uh, they win the competition. So it's a simple competition. All they do have to do is catch. So whoever runs the fastest catches and wins. Now, that's an evolutionary function. But you could also change it into something much more complicated where they have to dance or sing or, you know, they have to have, uh, they have to protect their, their tail feathers. And if they don't protect their tail feathers well, then it proves they're shitty and therefore not worthy of reproducing. Um, so you can have lots of different ways um, to implement the competition. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, because you describe it as just a simple competition that you're saying none of it has any of this nuance. Well, anyway. All right, he says we're just robots. How can this be when robots don't have feelings? So again, I, I don't know. I, this is probably the channel on the internet who's talked the most about sentient beings and feelings and the fact that <laughs> organisms have them and you have to appreciate that other organisms have them. Um, lots of, um, you know, vegetarian slash vegan style videos here. Lots of right to die because it's unnecessary suffering. Um, you know, 90% of the content is essentially devoted to that subject, and yet you're trying to imply that somehow I have missed it. I mean, <laughs> you know, silly much? Anyway, and that everything is because of evolution. Yes, well, again, there's only about, I don't know, what, um, how many pounds, like if, we, if you converted, um, <laughs> you know, the evidence into pounds, how many pounds of evidence are there for evolution? A trillion, <laughs> you know, and how many pounds of evidence are there for God? Um, probably the weight of a piece of toast with Mary's image on it. You know, ounce. 
Uh, so whatever. There's this obviously. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if you're t if you have some doubts about that truth. Um, that just means that you're um, belligerently stupid because the evidence is overwhelming. But anyway, but evolution is uh, bad because it creates unpleasant things. Blah 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 blah. Uh, obviously, I've said something a lot more com. I I've said more and. Um, more explicitly than that. So, you know, in volume, I've said a lot more about evolution, and certainly I've been more specific about the um, nuances of why the unpleasant things happen. It's because evolution doesn't have a brain. Okay, evolution is a dumb force, not a smart force. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't, it can't control the glue it makes, okay, and how sticky it gets. It just, just can't. It's not, um, it's not a professional at creation. Um, it's um, a, a very unsophisticated, unrobotic, you could argue. I mean, it's such a simple robot that you can almost not call it a robot, right? It's just so, like nobody calls a comb a robot, but the comb does the same thing. It does it mechanically, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's not a robot though. Anyway, it doesn't deserve the title. Um, and nature's just a comb. You know, evolution is just a, a, a mechanical filter. And it's a very stupid and ignorant one. Um, creates lots of horror for no good reason. Lots of wasted suffering. Because it doesn't know that suffering is a negative side effect. So it produces lots of it. Because it can produce it for free. It doesn't cost it anything. <laughs> okay. And that everything is because of evolution, but evolution is bad because it creates unpleasant things, yes. He said evolution is cold and uncaring and kills babies. Um, I, I don't care about the cold and uncaring part stuck to it. I mean, again, it's, you know, you want to re-paraphrase um, um, what I'm saying, then you ought to translate it into better language. Because frankly, you know, I think you know, uh, that's not the way I would have said it. But anyway... <laughs> evolution is dumb okay that's what it is so you put that in there um, and it is a fact it kills babies just gratuitously for it's a part of the process the one guy winning the race means that the other nine guys have to lose the race okay so you know for the one percent to win the 99 percent have to lose that means they have to trip on a stick and fall down and smash their face or do some other kind of tragedy that'll happen they have to get ground up in the competitive process for the process to work okay as a designer of killing machines and in the end that's all we are we're machines that are set upon the world to consume it <laughs> and uh you know and the consumption is create the hardware necessary, have the, the, the resources, capitalize on the resources, eat more food than the other people do, you know, eat better food, you know, don't drink the water with your own shit in it, you know, shit in somebody else's water. That's the evolutionary strategy. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so, of course, it kills babies. Uh, most of them very harshly and quickly and then it kills the winners late and just as harshly <laughs> so you know kills them all kills everything and it just does it more or less brutally depending on your luck the luck of the lane of the track some tracks are impossible to escape there's so many razor blades, uh, you know, in the dirt that it's going to cut your shoes off and then rip your feet off. So that's what some people have to run in. Um, they have no chance. You know, they lost before they even walk to the starting line. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, but we are also the product of evolution. Well, obviously, uh, that's a redundant and silly thing to say, of course, yes, of course. Uh, except that we have more feelings. Well, that's just um, your statement, not mine. So again, who, who you're quoting there, you're not quoting me. As I certainly wouldn't say that. I, I've said exactly the opposite. I've said to have language, we've probably lost some of our senses. Our senses are duller and dimmer. Um, uh, we have the dullest sense of smell of just about any mammal I've ever heard of. 
um, you know, and our hearing isn't as, um, doesn't have the, the same range as most animals, most mammals. So we're, we're, we're lesser in a lot of categories. And, um, you know, in terms of our sensing. And it, it would probably fit that, yes, we had to compromise some of our, um, uh, which you might call uh, capacity to emote, <laughs> okay, to do the thinking thing. Because thinking also requires you not to be distracted, you know, not to be too distracted by feelings. Uh, because then your thinking is just going to be about your feelings. So for the brain to work, to, to get any real value out of it, it needs some quiet time. Um, and I would argue that most animals don't get any of that quiet time. They are always in, you know, fight or flight. And there's only a few moments of their time where they can just sit around and say, I don't need to run anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't have to do anything right now. I can just sit here. You know, they don't get a whole lot of that um, peace. Anyway. Um, but we are also the product of uh, evolution. Let's see. Uh, that we have more feelings and better intellectual abilities. So again, it's th this is a line, you know. Our intellectual abilities sucked a million years ago. We still had a big giant brain, but we weren't doing anything much with it. So um, our innate intellectual abilities are really completely founded on the development of language. And if we can make uh, something like a chimpanzee language capable. That is, we can, I would argue, if we slow down its maturation so it doesn't grow up as fast, then we can teach it just like we teach our kids um, because there's time to teach it. The problem is, is they grow up too fast and we can't, they can't utilize um, the brain space because they can't create a language. might have been the difference between Cro-Magnon uh, Neanderthal and uh, the other humans might have been that fact because Neanderthals grew twice as fast. So um, it might be a big difference in how you, you're able to utilize a brain. Um, but anyway, so there are specific details. So intellectual abilities. Our intellectual abilities are based on our culture. Thousands of years of experimentation, thought, and arguments, the very thing you hate existing in the world, um, arguments. This is, it's vital to our progress. It's vital to us getting right answers, is having the guts to fight for ideas. And you hate that. Yeah, You despise that progress engine, um, you know, because you're an Anderthal trying to throw us back into the past. Anyway you know, upholding idiotic and inane traditions. So again, you know, I can do a little commentary. You know, the worst thing about these trolls, the Godfreys and the whatever, Mickey Fartley, um, you know, they put up nothing in terms of a philosophical statement, what they believe, because they're not willing to be ripped new assholes. <laughs> you know, they're not willing to um, endure the same mockery and distortions and perversions that they do to other people by standing for something. Um, <clears throat> just such cowards. Anyway. Um, feelings and better intellectual abilities uh, than other animals, right? So, of course, so that's just uh, urban legend kind of mush if you really want to get into the real biology and all this kind of stuff. Um, animals are functioning at a very high level. They're just functioning very different than we function. So if you think about how much... Um, you know, many of the other higher mammals, how much is built into them, how much, um, how much knowledge they have uh, without being educated, you know, just being dumped in the grass, and in a few days, they're really functional, where, you know, we're, <laughs> you know, you can't even dump us in the grass, we can't survive, it just won't happen. Um, we don't even have the skills to um, figure out how to um, what to eat and what not to eat. I mean, you're dead in a week, uh, you know, without a, uh, an education, uh, you know, in terms of um, understanding how your own body works and your own biology. 
Anyway, uh, he says that we should stop reproducing. Uh, yeah, I'm saying it's child abuse. You're sentencing somebody to death. You know, yeah, you let them live first, but you're still putting them in the electric chair. So you're saying, oh, we have a rec room at the prison, and they can play pool and some pinball machines, and yeah, then, then we're going to electrocute them. Um, yeah, I'm just saying you have no right to play that game. What the fuck is that game? That's a retarded thing for you to do for your entertainment. So, yeah, they should stop for lots of reasons. Um, no good reason to do it. Um, way too, way above your pay grade. There's no human on this planet who can ensure they're not going to fuck it up. And, um, you know, it's just too dangerous. You don't have a right to, um hang swords of Damocles over somebody's head. Hang them over your own. You know, go ahead. Beat the shit out of yourself if that's what you want to do. But you don't have a right to make somebody else and then beat the shit out of them. Okay. <clears throat> he says that feelings matter. Um, duh. Yeah. I mean, this one really shouldn't be something that has to be argued. We all know it from experience. We all know the difference between the cupcake and the nail in the eye. And the big philosophical leap is that you have to accept that you live in a world full of other machines, okay, that have exactly the same dilemma. And um, when they get the nail in the eye, it's just as bad as when you get the nail in the eye. It's nothing special about your eyes and your brain. Your, your brain doesn't go, ow, you know, in some special way that makes you so much more important. And we have to keep nails out of your eye because you're so much more important. So, yeah, it's not very hard to figure that one out. <clears throat> uh, you know, I really, <clears throat> I really shouldn't have to even say it, right? I mean, everybody should be able to agree. But, yeah, it's clearly the nihilists don't agree. They somehow think, because other people aren't them, that they aren't people. And, you know, it's just so dumb. You're just, I mean, I'm, I'm at a loss for how to explain somebody out of that deep a dumb hole. <clears throat> when you're that deep in the dumb hole, I don't know if you can ever get out. <clears throat> All right, anyway. Of course, I say feelings matter. Yes, I've experienced them. They obviously are saying matter, matter, matter all over the place. They're telling me, sure, tell us, tell them that his feelings matter. That's what the feelings are telling me. They're saying right to me. You must tell them that feelings matter. <clears throat> I mean, I just thought you all knew. I mean, why should I have to tell you this? Don't the feelings tell you they matter? I mean, they're saying it loud and clear to me. Anyway, he also says that we are basically the same, but also individuals. Well, duh, I'm saying all the computers are the same, right? The, you know, but every car, let's say, has a computer in it, and that computer's programmed differently. <clears throat> they all have the same chips, you know? You could go to the chip store. And, oh, yeah, that's a 794. Yeah, 794. Yeah, they all have 794s in them. Uh, it doesn't mean they're the same machine, it just means that they function basically the same. So, yes, all humans basically have the same function. They have the same brain organs, the same body organs, uh, hormones, all of this kind of stuff. But obviously, some people have uteruses and some people don't. Um, you know, so there's obvious differences in how we are formed. And some of those differences are physical, um, you know, how big your liver is compared to your kidneys or something. Um, and some of them are um, environmental. Uh, you know, some of us have to run on the outside track. Some of us have, uh, um, you know, to overcome um, environmental deprivations um, to play the game. So what is it? Where, why imply there's some conflict there? It's obvious we're all uh, mechanically uh, built by um, nature with certain broad category of functionality. But clearly, there's some of us that are three feet tall and some of us that are eight feet tall. So, yeah. Anyway, one time he said everything is predetermined. I, I mean, everything. I, I didn't say that one time. I've said it 700 times at least. Everything has already happened, okay, in a sense. <clears throat> There's nothing we can change because everything we do is a caused effect. Every single mechanical piece of the universe is in a course and it's not going to magically choose to move some other way. So there's no, there's no mechanism that is spontaneous 
in any way or that does anything truly random. <clears throat> and if you can identify such a thing, I would be interested, but you won't do it. You won't provide any evidence for why <clears throat> anyone should doubt that. There's absolutely no good physical evidence establishing the existence of anything okay that wasn't caused by something else and that it was and that in the elemental universe all of those effects are limited there's very few things that can choose <laughs> okay um the rocks falling down the cliff can't choose where they're going to go so you know unless you unless you can show some evidence that that's what they do that there is choices that somewhere god interferes or something but see, there's nothing here, right? So he's implying one time he said that everything is predetermined, when obviously I've said it a lot more than one time. And um, so what's the point of the, the, the statement? Um, you're trying to impugn the idea of determinism? With what? What's your alternative theory to determinism? I've already pointed out how free will is moronic. Free will wouldn't be smart will or good will. So what good would that be? And then if you're going to say we have automatic goodwill and we know right from wrong automatically, well, now you're just talking silly religion. But again, he yeah, puts nothing up. Anyway, so do we have the freedom of choice or not? Well, I mean, it's just there's no, it's, it's so obvious that we clearly don't choose. We decide. You can use a you know more precise word. Your brain goes through a process. The decision is already determined. You've made it before you know you even made it because the system was set up to make it. It couldn't, the pendulum couldn't swing any other way than the way it's going to swing. Um, and that's why it's vital that people have information because information is what's deciding how the little ball bounces inside your head. The more information you have, the more you can make the right decisions. So you find out things about something, you find out they have a, you know, somebody you liked, a group you liked, and then you find out they have a white paper where they're scheming, you know, to kill the Jews or something, or doing some nasty thing. And that information prevents you from doing the wrong, making the wrong choices. Um, you know, what's, what's so complicated about that? But you don't have any freedom to what? Freedom to choose outside of your knowledge of the world? Freedom to play the piano? Freedom to... You, know, you don't have any freedom, okay? You're nothing but a confined organism. And right here, you're not free to step out of whatever it is, your petty hatreds. There's some little, there's some little notion in, encompassed in my general philosophy that offends you deeply, okay? Who knows what that really is, what the, what the little trigger was that set you off on your little mission to kill and destroy. Um... You know, but I would argue it's stupid. <laughs> okay, your reaction is idiotic. And it's because you're an in, uninformed moron. So you're basically, you know, you're selling your little Nazi mission. Um, and I'm obviously going to oppose you because that's, it's, that's all it seems to me. You're just out to cause more harm in the universe. For what reason? You know, because you want to be average Joe again. You want to... You want to relive your stupid, putsy, moronic life again and again and again and again. And you don't care how many babies you kill to do it. <laughs> what the fuck? Too retarded. All right. Um, so, um, and there are more contradictory statements coming from him. So there's no contradictions. This is the biggest lie of these losers is this idea that they can't do any complex thinking, you know. Um, and it's just, that's how it comes down to. I mean, obviously, every, every generalization somebody might st state can have uh, exceptions. And it's a given in the conversation when you say something like most people, you know. You're not saying all people. You know, these qualifications matter. That you don't care because your mission isn't, the truth. Your mission is to propagandize for whatever your wacky cause is, which is apparently more um, meat grinder. You like listening to bones being crushed and the sinew popping and the little squeaks and moans of the organisms as they get ground up. Yuck. Can you see them? Question mark. 
Yeah, no, I don't see them, of course. I think most reasonable people wouldn't see that there's any uh, estemic problem. Like there's some kind of, oh, yeah, th those are contrary ideas. The fact is, is that our ideas change the future. What ideas are in people's heads will change the future. Now, we're not going to choose to change the future. <laughs> we're just going to be stuck with the project because our brain is going to calculate 2 plus 2 and come up with 4. If people calculate that it's necessary, then they'll do it. And they can only calculate that it's necessary because they've been programmed you know, okay, to get the right formula. All right, and the right formula isn't mv squared. The right formula is all there is is the mass of the feeling organism, okay, and the velocity of its destruction or something like that. All you need is the two simple components, um, that there is no need uh, outside of your needs you create. Uh, the universe doesn't need life to exist. It doesn't cure or fix anything that's broken. Just like MV squared, it doesn't fix anything that's broken. Um, and there's just no need for it. Uh, and why would any thinking brain say, make it anyway? Even though you're going to torture things to do it. And that's all it comes down to. You're willing to torture people for gratification of your silly notions. And they're just silly notions of purpose and function. Ugh. You really are disgusting. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll call that part one. And then I'll come back and do the other side of the argument, so to speak. Kind of. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to wait very long. <laughs> yeah, really. I'll be right back, probably. Hit the pause button. Oh, no. I'm paused. Yeah, no, I'm still paused. I'm still supposed to be paused. All right. I'll be back. All right, I should be back for good. Finish up here. Anyway, sorry, I was, should have put the comment on the screen, so at least you can see little Stanley F's bullshit, blah, 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 blah. And uh, we'll do what Stanley F deserves. <clears throat> I mean, it's a sock account. It's probably Farley. It's just got lies in it. So we might as well just say, fuck off. So we will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so here's the other one right here. Okay. Forte Classy, whatever this is. Um, Fruitio e Classy. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> as a therapeutic thing, I can understand why people go for her way of thinking. So this is a comment on the uh, enlightened Buddhist girly thingy. Um, I heard somewhere she's pregnant now, and uh, you know, it's just it all goes even worse. So I didn't even bother making a follow-up video, <laughs> just because it's like, oh, this, yeah, just another tragic deluded retard oh, life is suffering except you don't have to pay any attention to it until it happens to you so whatever i mean you know let her she's, she's, she's gonna pay a price for this little adventure she's going on so um yeah yeah i shouldn't be sympathetic though because again these are the nazis frankly i mean this is the the real cause here is these people are all assigning risk on all of us. And um, it's essentially, you know, I, I mean, some people aren't going to appreciate this metaphor, but I don't really care because it's true. It's like the Jews in the concentration camp. Um, that's what these people are doing. Okay, these pro-lifers are um, maliciously evil. I mean, they really are worse than Nazis. Um, they're, they're, they're subjecting people to such harsh um, uh, punishment for, you know, things that they can't do anything about, which is being born defective, um, having a life experience that traumatizes them. And they're going to just keep imposing this over and over again. They're just going to keep filling the, the St. Jude Hospital full of kids with cancer. And it's just, that's, that's evil frankly. There's no other word for it. For what? You know, so humans can listen to really shitty music, you know, because all the music sucks now, and, um, you know, watch retarded plays. All the plays suck now. I mean, they're all cartoons. I mean, Spongebob on Broadway, right? There's probably a Spongebob on Broadway now. I mean, please. Too stupid. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, as a therapeutic thing, I can I can understand why people go for her way of thinking. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you're just looking for a drug, um, I can't even see it. Frankly, I don't. I don't see any way this even. You know, you have to be so stupid to sit there and and play along. I mean, it's. It's such a, it's a Barney the Dinosaur description of reality. I mean, how does anybody fall for it? I mean, it's like saying, you know, Teletubbies is, you know, enlightenment. I mean, how could that work for you, frankly, as a possibility even? It's not even a drug a rational person could take. I mean, the pill is just... They obviously know I can't eat that, <laughs> you know. So it doesn't fit in my mouth. How can how how can you people be on this stupid drug? Anyway, well, let's see. Go for her way of thinking, basically a coping mechanism. I I don't like I said I I just don't see any how a real how a person that isn't like disabled by a, a really limited IQ could um, see anything coping mechanism in going. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's not. Ha <laughs> I mean, that's not gonna work. Fuck. All right, your influence on me, uh, uh, basically making me relate to reality. I didn't say you had to relate to it. Frankly, uh, you know, you can understand it. That's all you have to do. You know, you, you know. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's going to influence. You're not going to be as comfortable eating the things you used to eat. Maybe that's true. If you start realizing, yeah, yeah, I really am financing torture. I mean, fuck that. Um, so yeah, it's some inconveniences that way. But I mean, realistically, it doesn't change anything substantially. You're still in this. It doesn't change the world any, except, um, you know, you have to spend a little more time um, reflecting on how lucky you've been and how horrible it is for the victims the concentration camp. see every now and then i'll flash the picture in front of you of the concentration camp okay so you're fighting the nazis <clears throat> not only because they're <clears throat> fascist assholes but this also this this you know you throw the picture in front of you so to me it's it's motivation to fight um and to you it's somehow deflating okay your influence on me, basically making me relate to reality, has started to ruin my life. So you're saying that your life wasn't going to be ruined anyway. That you were going someplace great. You know, you had a you had a well developed plan for your future and somehow I got in the the plan's way. I would suggest if you if you ran across an Inmendum video, your life wasn't going the right way anyway. <laughs> right? Because it's not that easy to to find an Inmendum video. Um, you know, typing the usual tri tripe into YouTube isn't going to get you here. So, you know, this is all kind of like your interpretation. You want to, you know, um, you're, I think you're exaggerating that you were going to do so much better, okay, if you didn't have to face reality. And I don't even know if, whether you're facing it, frankly. Okay, it's starting to ruin my life. Um, can't stop contemplating the concept of excruciating pain. Well, again, contemplating it and experiencing, you know, actually being subjected to it are two different things. And yes, I mean, the fact that it can, I mean, obviously being risk aware, I mean, knowing that, oh shit, it's going to happen to me. I mean, I, the dice really do have it on my dice too. It's written on my dice too cancer some sort of shit it's on my dice you know <laughs> i mean uh yeah that's irritating as fuck um so i, I can feel your pain in that respect um but again w what's the alternative is oh you'll just pretend it doesn't happen and everything will be all right well it won't it's still written on your dice and in some respects it's better to know it's coming because then you'll be um you might be you might have less messy a life then because you're prepared for it in the sense you've recognized that oh maybe I won't have a family because I can't tell whether I'm going to live long enough to take care of them you know that's one of the reasons not to have kids is well unless I have a million dollars in the bank who who's going to raise my kids if I die where are they going to be on welfare fuck you know I don't want that
I mean, those little logical things can really save an awful lot of harm. So, I mean, yeah, you have to take a hit, you know, in the short run, but in the long run, the hit will be worth it. All right. Uh, can't stop contemplating excruciating, making my anxiety skyrocket. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, you know, this is part of the price. I'm just saying you can choose. You only got really two choices, right? You're either part of the problem or part of the solution. So you're basically saying being a Nazi fighter is, you know, it's not, it's too hard. Um, you know, and you're whining that the Nazis have better, you know, they have comfy chairs in their tanks. You know, and all the trench guys have pillows for their knees. You know, they got, you know, they got lots of advantages. <laughs> so I'll go fight on their side because, you know, it's easier. That's your real choice. So, you know, I'm sorry there's not a great choice here, but to blame me for the reality we're in uh, is kind of lame, actually. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sorry you're, you're, you find it unpleasant being uh, a responsible human. I, I wouldn't have a dog, you know, for lots of reasons. But one of the reasons that's really a non-starter for me is I'm not picking up poo every day. You know, I mean, it's it's the right thing to do, cleaning up the poo and all that kind of stuff, but I really don't, I, I'm not going to pick up dog shit every day. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's, that, that's too much of a reminder for me, just how life is stupid, is just shit anyway. I mean, shit is disgusting. And picking it up and carrying it with me down the street, I just can't relate to that. I can't relate to... I'm going to do that every day. I mean, that is prison for me in a sense. I mean, it's not prison. Don't get. It. It's just, it's so, it's just such a bad note in the symphony that the whole symphony could just be destroyed by that one thing alone. If that was the only problem in life, it would still bug the fuck out of me. Because I don't have a good relationship with poo. I don't like it. And, and I just don't want to be reminded, oh, you know, poo, oh, it's disgusting. Ew. I mean, I used to turn around when my dog pooed, right? When I had a dog, I would turn around when he pooed, you know, because it's privacy. <laughs> you know, I just the, the, it just doesn't appeal to me at all. I mean, it, you know, so it's a silly thing, but it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I understand, okay, that, you know, for you personally, this is an anxiety provoker, but I'm just saying you're stuck in the, the, the fact is, is I'm not provoking the anxiety. The philosophy is not provoking the anxiety. The reality is, and the only way the anxiety stops being experienced is to fight the Nazis. If you let them win, you're going to keep doing this over and over again. You're just, you're just voting for reoccurrence. And in a sense, you're very you know, this the very idea that you're making this little whiny complaint, you know, as if there's really an alternative, you're just, you're not really pumping up anybody, okay? You're not singing the Rocky song, you know, getting stronger and all that kind of crap. No, you're, 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 you're humming a real failure tune, you know, and it's, it's just, you're not doing the cause any good with this whine, frankly. You should just say, look, I'm just whining, because you know I'm having a, a you know I'm having a, a baby moment and I need to cry a little, and um, you know so you know don't take what I'm ta saying too seriously. I'm just being a little baby at the moment. You know that's okay. I mean somebody can complain in the foxhole. <laughs> Doesn't this suck? <laughs> oh man, this sucks so bad. And everybody just goes, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's rough, ain't it? They're there. You know, I got a half a cigarette left. <laughs> you know, you want it? You know, they'll try to help you out. I can try to help you out, but I mean, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry. Oh, life's tough. Oh, shit. Anyway, my anxiety skyrocket. Uh, body parts uh, literally start aching. <clears throat> yeah, well, you can understand those kind of concepts, and you can sort of protect yourself from some of that, you know, by, you know, having projects. <laughs> you know, keeping your mind occupied. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yes, this is what life will do. It's going to, it's going to. So, so you know, and I'm just saying being aware that, um, you know, maybe you shouldn't sign up for more than your, your, um, degrading physical condition can manage.
Okay, literally start aching, imagining things, even if I'm personally safe. Well, you should be able to deal with that if you're personally safe. That should be comforting. So you should be able to fix your little, oh, I'm obsessing. Oh, I'm safe, though, so I don't have to obsess. I can't get over it because of the awareness that <clears throat> in the bigger picture, the significance is the same whether it's me or someone else. Yes, so there you go. That's the circumstance. I'm just saying you, you, we all are stuck. And you're just saying that I don't want to be... <clears throat> we're, we're all um, part of the, the evil machine. And it's just a matter like you're part, you're, you're part of the torture device. And you're really just saying, yes, it's, you're going to have to pay a price to advocate, to say, I'm not going to be this anymore. Um, you know, and that's going to, it's, it's, it's not for free. But you're saying you'd rather not know, which is the part that's ick. So, uh, it's horrible. I'd rather be like this dumb bitch instead. Saddy face. So you'd rather be a Nazi. So you'd rather just force the, keep the concentration camps going. You know, keep the engine of grinding them to pieces and, and uh, torturing the sentient beings. You want to keep the industry going. Keep the smokestack pumping the smoke. You know, keep it going. You'd rather be that and happy. Okay, then... Um, endure the fact that you're going to have to go through this grind um, that won't be as bad as being in the camp, right? You're still, as a soldier, going to liberate. You got it better than the people in the camp. I mean, you know, that's something to feel better about. And you've got a purpose. You know, a hero, you're, you can be sort of a hero if you do the right thing, you press the right buttons, and you, you know, shoot your little gun the right way. Um, so you got something to win here. Uh, it's a personal little subjective, um, I mean, you know, every Olympic champion had to pay for it. You know what I mean? They had to go through a lot of, um, I don't want to train today kind of feelings, you know, oh, this is so hard. I'm tired. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and they had to fight it, you know, to be a winner. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I, maybe I'm not making a very good motivational speech because I'm just turning it into a fuck you, you're a little whiny coward. Um, but maybe that's the right speech at the right time. You know, I, you know, I don't turn this into a Patton movie, you know, where you, your job as a soldier isn't to, um, you know, die for your country, it's to make the other fucker die for his country, you know. Uh, it's whatever. So, yeah, I'm sorry you're unhappy, um, you know, with reality. But, yeah, I'm not pleased either. Um, but I do know that I can't. If I could do it all, you know, if I one man could just change it all and I can do the whole soldier thing and win, you know, if I was uh, Captain America and I had a super shield I could, you know, throw around and cut everybody's heads off with it, uh, I would do it, okay? But I'm not Captain America. I don't got no fucking shield thingy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't have any superpowers. So I'm going to need help, frankly. Um, all of us who care, okay, are going to have to need, we need each other's help to get the job done. Um, and, you know, I'm sorry you don't like that, but that's the world as it is. All right, that's enough of that. Um, I don't know what this part of. I, I might as well, since I'm here, I guess I might as well read another comment. Superhuman dance has a few screws loose. Oh, duh. Don't you guys essentially agree? Well, <clears throat> uh, what do they say? Um, <clears throat> you, you can um, be for something for the right reasons. Um, you can do the right thing for the wrong reasons. Okay, so Superhuman Dance says some of the right things, but he says it for the wrong reasons, um, in my opinion. Uh, the, the only reasoning is one based on the physical facts of evolution and understanding how um, mechanized and um, how, how poorly constructed 
the game is that we're playing. It's a really dumb game of just addiction. You know, you could just form it into a hopscotch or something, and it's just this formation of we we are demanded to get into these silly competitions for these silly personal victories of I did it, I, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it always comes down to, you know, I fucked her, you know, or some kind of stupid thing that, oh, I got the great victory. And of course, we know that when we get these great victories, yeah, the world doesn't change. Everything's not great, blah, 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 blah. So it's just a game of addiction. And, you know, it's too stupid to be imposing that on anybody. Uh, but anyway, um, so well, anyway, there's, uh, there, there's, I would argue there's little common between me and superhuman dance in terms of um, logic. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, the fact that he's come to some of the same conclusions, I can't speak for how he got there. You know, maybe it's through his own failures or something. I don't know. Uh, he probably has a... Um, homo erectic <laughs> attraction to you and it's fright it's and is fighting it well whatever i mean all of this crap seems it's all part of the silly game that people play right that you know what really does drive people are all these superficial um mechanisms you know their their ego um their vanity their um you know, just this whole idea that somehow there, it's, it's, it's nothing real that was in the, you know, is their problem. Like, I could argue that there were just years where I spent, I spent feeling lonely. Okay, because I, I didn't have a girlfriend and I, you know, I wasn't able to manage to develop a relationship because of um, my limitations, my anxiety disorder, different things. And so it was just impractical to find a, find love <laughs> and um, I let it bother me and then uh, but in hindsight it's so obvious that it didn't mean anything I mean if I had somebody then I would have had all the problems that go with having a relationship which is all of the peripheral um, aggravations that you get you know when somebody else's life has to be blended into yours and you have to start modifying all of the you know, all your pillows start getting dented the wrong way. You know, all the, everything that you're structurally comfortable with becomes something that's not comfortable to them. You know, and they have all those conflicts and all the bullshit that comes with it. So I just mean that, you know, in hindsight, uh, I would have suggested to that person not to fret. No big deal. But anyway, so uh, just saying that we're we're so controlled by these just notions of what it is to be a winner or what it is to be successful or what it is to, and it's all this superficial crap, um, and that's too bad, you know, that people are really wrapped in that package of, um, you know, competition. I mean, I spent years resenting guys who were better looking, you know, and had this and that. You know, you're just saying, <laughs> just, you know, it's just so petty and silly. These are silly reasons to like or dislike somebody. Um, so I'm just saying, it's we're all, uh, you know, have these screws loose, so to speak, in terms of um, what we're competing with and how what we think is important to prove, you know, and all that crap. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, well, your your statement wasn't all that eloquent, but I didn't do a brilliant job of responding to it in terms of perfectly coherent, but it is what it is. It just gets complicated, but it's just tied up in all of this. I was trying to just get to the, it's all this Freudian crap. I mean, we really are driven by a bunch of, you know, psychological damage. Anyway, does the lady not realize that in saying that nothing has a point or needs one then that logically justifies anybody causing horrendous harm to her and anybody else and she's celebrating that what a dunce i'm just it's so stupid that you know what's what are you going to pick at it's just so nonsensical to say somehow um 
recognizing that we're individual brains, that causes all the suffering. I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, it has nothing to do with it. If we all said, kumbaya, we're all one brain, it's not going to change all the people getting cancer and all those. It's not going to make anything any better. That's not going to fix anything. It was just such, they said, there's such, there's just such silly sentences that you're just like, how can people believe anything like this is a, even a philosophy? It's so incoherent. You know, it's incoherent. It's just, it's, it's, you know, I know. All right. Uh, let's see. Yes, it's just a theater in your head, but it's real. Yeah, exactly. The, the, brain creates the projector it pre <laughs> creates the screen it creates you sitting in the chair it just creates the whole stupid mess all right uh you have to deal with your experience great response experiences great response well whatever thanks that was a yeah that was a good video i thought it was humorous enough and all that kind of stuff it had all the little pieces it needed oh this seems like the same guy as before the vaccine and popular culture seem to be aimed at population reduction. What the fuck is this shit? The vaccine. So, I don't know, it's some vaccine conspiracy now? <laughs> the vaccine seemed a logical step when you have, a, oh, we have a new virus that nobody's immune to, so maybe we should make a vaccine. Yeah, that seems like the rational thing to do. I don't know. Popular culture, what, what the fuck would even popular culture be described as now, right? Culture has reached a duality, right? So, I mean, it's extremism on the left and extremism on the right, and there's nothing in between. So, I mean, there's no popular culture. There's popular cultures. So there's two popular cultures, hate and stupidity, <laughs> greed and stupidity. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, the Democrats are just stupid and the Republicans are fucking evil. <laughs> They're, it's, it's that simple. It's stupid and evil. All right. Seems to me aimed at um, population reduction. I don't see, wh I don't even know where you got that from. Neither party seems interested at in all in population reduction. They both seem to want to, you know, subsidize the chaos. At least among the middle class. So I don't know what that means. The middle class is too busy going to work to, you know, um, uh, feed the inheritance wealthy and the welfare whores. So the middle class doesn't, it doesn't do any of this philosophy stuff. All right. So that's a good thing, right? Um, fuck you. I don't even know what the fuck that was. Arthur Schopenhauer. Well, this is obviously probably a troll account. No one will ever win the battle of the sexes. There's too much fraternizing with the enemy. Henry Kissinger. Oh, yeah, I saw that a couple of... He posted a couple of Henry Kissinger quotes. Eh. Anyway, <laughs> you know. So, whatever. Obviously, there's no battle of the sexes in any, you know, meaningful way. There's just conflict. And there always will be because, yeah, our... our uh, gonads are in different places, <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway, so, uh, that's probably enough now, we've probably reached an hour, oh, almost, two more minutes, oh, dear, let's see if I can find it, one more comp, wait, isn't this the same guy again, the New Age movement uh, was funded by MK, Ultra, and similar entities to divorce people from reality so they could be more comfortable, MK Ultra. What the fuck is that? Anyway, uh, she is clearly a product of this movement. I don't know. And her kind of persona is going to become accepted. I, I really don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, our I mean, what's becoming accepted is stupid. There's a lot of stupid in the world. I mean, just really, really dumb. And they're celebrating it. You know, they're like even celebrating having actual mental dysfunction, you know, like Asperger's or something. And they word I am Asperger's. And, you know, they'll wear it like a, you know, <laughs> it's so cool because I am, you know, smarty abled. 
you know, they're almost like it's almost, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. But, I mean, it's just, it's kind of mockable. Anyway, um, humanity is at the end. Well, they've been saying that forever. Um, they're, they're, you don't kill humans that easily. I mean, humans will eat garbage, as is proved in the world right now today. Um, they really don't care how many of their babies die and all that kind of crap. So they will just grind it into a completely uncivilized planet. So this whole idea that it's going to end, no, it's... It's gonna. The only way it's gonna end is we have to end it on purpose and humanely. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just gonna become crippled, and <clears throat> disfigured, and grotesque. They need to um, psychologically prepare people for the transition to the post-human, whatever that is. There's no need for people in the future. There's no need for anything in the future. Anything sentient. Oh, God, you're just an idiot, I think. Naturally, people sense this, hence rise in drug addiction. <sighs> Different kinds of drugs, but uh, the level of people anesthetizing themselves probably isn't any different than it's ever been. An awful lot of people in the 20s, even though something was roaring 20s, everything's great, and they were drunk half the time. So obviously, you know, there's a reason people go to reach for the bottle, you know. And it's not a good reason. All right, anyway. Uh, so, um, now I probably have, yeah, so now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, I shouldn't think of this as a chore, but it sort of is. I mean, it is a whole fucking, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's unpleasant to contemplate just because you realize just how um, how stupid people are and just how difficult it is to reason with them and that's been that's been a um, deflating wake up call for me is just you know you thought the job was just trying to say things you know well and you no know, you have to do it even better than that <laughs> you know and uh, it's really not I'm not too suited to that but um, uh, frankly, um, you know, I'm sitting in the chair, so until uh, somebody else takes the chair, I'm stuck with it. So, yeah, so it's you know, have to do, pig. <laughs> you know, sorry, I didn't, you know, it wasn't the best video, but I'm, you know, <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to make excuses. Well, I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to... One of my fingernails is cracked. Yeah, so there, that's my, my excuse. I'm just off. Um, no, but, you know, it's all part of the process. So we know what some of the key words, the trigger words are determinism and robot and um, feudal and torture. I mean, torture is not one they're recognizing. So that's the one I have to emphasize more, is that this is just about people who don't care whether they torture stuff because it's that simple it's the risk of torture that should people should automatically oh okay that's enough all you have to tell me is that i'm risking causing torture oh okay i won't do it then it's not that important so all of this should be understandable is a, a risk of torture now i just i had a thought occur to me you know if you know they could put that on a pack of cigarettes, right? Uh, you're risking someone else's torture. Okay, well, damn. You know, maybe I'd try to find an excuse to still smoke one now and then, right? You know, because, yeah, I'm risking somebody else's torture, but it's a cigarette. So you do have to understand how dependent people are on the drug that they're living for. And some of these ideas, I guess you could think of them as drugs. And so they can't let them go. Um, because their addiction is hard. Um, where I never had that, frankly. You know, I just never was very certain that I was doing this living thing was a great idea. I mean, it just never, you know, never really sat right with me right from the start that, um, you know, this is automatically, well, it's great, I'm me. Yeah, I wasn't too sure it was so fucking great.
But anyway, so I, I mean, I never got addicted to this cigarette. So, um, but you know, I'm just saying, maybe that's part of trying to understand why people are so resistant to just accepting the fact that it's just unfortunate, but it, you know, planet Earth is a bug planet. We're still just bugs, you know, and we have a little bit of intelligence and we can do some things that look kind of fancy and not bug-like, but basically it's still just bugs. No, we still, you know, if you our Dorian Gray true picture, you know, we have the antenna and, you know, the chomping jaws and, you know, we're still just bugs. And it's just sad, but nobody should defend bugatopia. <laughs> you know, nobody should be saying, oh, yes, let's, you know, let's do bug forever. No, not a good idea. All right, that's probably enough. Yeah, I'm. Let it be written. No. What did they used to say? Let it be so. Let it be written. Let it be so. Or some kind of, you know, whatever. Whatever the line is. Anyway, yeah, I'm forgetting all that kind of stuff. Age. Ugh. Anyway. Till the next time and such. Let's see what I do. Oh, yeah, I did make a video, a Pyro video. Um, on the Do Not God channel. So, um, you know, but it's on physics, but it really isn't physics. It's just a personal fight between me and Piero about who's allowed to insult who with what insults. And <laughs> so, so um, just for those who uh, want to understand the context of um, just because me and Piero have some history and um, why it's just you know, it's just really not possible to continue interacting with um, a jerk. He's just a jerk. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, so anyway, so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Yeah, I think that's enough.